Hi, and welcome back to Maths class. We're halfway through our lesson on finding rules for circular functions. So in the first two examples, we were given graphs. And in the second two examples, we're just given information about the graphs. So part of the information I'm given is what form of the equation to use. And looking at this, I can see that I have a vertical translation but there's no horizontal translation. And there may or may not be a dilation. This might, n can be one. Um, and similarly, there may or may not be an amplitude there. It could be just one. There may be no dilation vertically either. However, when I look a little bit further, I can see that there definitely is a dilation there. And my period is five. There's a horizontal dilation as well. And now I just need to use all the information given to work out a n and b. All right, so let's start with the first information given. The range is negative 3 to 1. So my amplitude, if you remember from the last example, I'm going to use the y max minus the y minimum. In other words, what is the y value, the maximum y value, and what is the minimum y value? And that's given to me in the range over 2. So the y max is 1. Oh, this is the same as the last one. I didn't do that on purpose. So I get 2. All right, 1 minus negative 3 over 2 gives me 2. But what about the mid, the center line? The center line is going to have an equation, which I'm still going to use these two endpoints, but I'm going to take the average of those two endpoints, which means I just add them together and divide by 2. So it's the same, it's y max plus y min divided by 2, which gives me negative, oh, let's start with the max, 1 plus negative 3 over 2, which is negative 2 on 2, which gives me negative 1. However, if I try to even just picture the sketch in my mind, I don't need to show all that working if I've got nice whole numbers. I'm just showing you a method in case you do need to show that working. Um, but you can see here that from negative three up to one is a distance of four and half of that is two. And from negative three to one, well, the midpoint is going to be negative one. You should be able to see that. But sometimes, especially with midpoint, especially when one of our values is positive and one is negative, we can make an error. So it's nice to have a bomb proof, foolproof method that'll get us there. Okay, the next thing I know is that the period is five. So I can now find N period is 5, so 2 pi on n equals 5. I can solve that and I get n equals 2 pi on 5. Now the question doesn't ask me to write the equation. It asks me to write the values of a, b and n. I always go back and check the question because I can see I actually haven't done that. What I've done is I've found an equation for the center line, I found my amplitude, I have done it for n. So you can see I have written the value of n. So what I might go back and do is I'll pop an a in there and underline it. So anyone scanning my work can find the answer for the value of a. This is going to give me my vertical translation. So I'm just gonna write b there and underline it so that anyone scanning my work can find the value of b and I'll underline that because those are the three key things that I need to find. What I'm also going to do is write my equation y equals 2 sine 2 pi on 5x minus 1. But I wasn't asked to do that, so I don't strictly speaking need to. All right, one more example now. So I'm now going to start looking at example 4. I can see that I'm going to have an amplitude, I'm going to have a horizontal dilation, and there's going to be a horizontal translation. But I can also see from the range. The range is from negative 3 to 3. So that I can see there, there's no vertical translation, which means I can very quickly write down my amplitude and I don't need to show any working at all. The amplitude is going to be three and I'm straight away going to use the pronumeral A, which is what I'm asked to use here. All right, the next thing I can use is the fact that the period is eight and that will help me to find N. So my period is eight. That means that two pi on N equals eight. Solve that equation and you get 2 pi on 8 is n, which is the same as pi on 4. 
So I've now already found A and N. And so the last thing I need to find is epsilon. That's sort of my horizontal translation, but there are actually two ways to go about doing this. And I'm gonna show you both of those methods. Um, the way that I like to use is, I know that Y is zero when X is three. So if I do a quick sketch, what that basically means is that if there's three, that's going to be the starting point of my function, okay? And because I know that the period is eight, if I add eight and three, that's gonna bring me back here at 11, all right? And of course, in between, I'm gonna have another x-intercept, but I'm focusing on this first one. So what that tells me is that I've taken a normal sine graph and it's moved to the right three. Now, so far, I know that my function is y equals three sine pi on four x plus epsilon. But if I use what I know about translations, then I can also write my function like this, three sine pi on four on the outside, and then x minus three, because that's how a horizontal translation would look in my equation. I then want to make this into the same form as this plus epsilon, where I don't have the x minus three in a separate bracket, which just means I need to expand this bracket here. So I'm gonna go three sine pi on four x minus three pi on four. So notice that when I'm in this format, the format given in the question, the epsilon does not give me exactly the horizontal translation, all right? I need to take out a factor of n first before I'll get the horizontal translation of three, okay? So that's one way of doing it. And I like doing that method because I find using this method that x minus three is gonna give me a translation to the right of three. I find that quite straightforward. There is another method I can use, and that is I'm told that when y is zero, x is three, which means that three zero is a point on my graph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute y is zero into this equation and x is three. And that's gonna give me this zero equals three sine pi on four times three plus epsilon. So let's solve that now. Well, I know that the three really isn't gonna affect it. I divide both sides of my equation by three and I'll got, get zero equals sine pi, three pi on four plus epsilon. So when is sine of an angle equal to zero? So sine is my y value, which means it's going to happen, if I look at my unit circle, it's going to happen here and here. So it's gonna happen in multiples of pi. So um, three pi on four plus epsilon can equal zero or pi or two pi. It can also equal negative pi, negative two pi and so on. All right, but I really just want to know the horizontal shift. So I'm really gonna focus on one. So what I'm gonna do is just use the zero value in order to solve this. So three pi on four plus epsilon equals zero. Solve that, I get epsilon equals three, sorry, negative three pi on four, which is the same as what I found over here, okay? What I didn't do when I did it this way, which you should make sure you do, because the question says, find the values of a, n, and epsilon, I would make sure that I write down epsilon equals negative three pi on four, and underline it just to help my examiner find it. Okay, that's the end of our video on finding the rules for graphs of circular functions.